uh, Glendon. This is Eddie O again. Um, I apologize for the second phone call. Um, so here to let you know, enjoy your uh, your YouTube pages. Uh, my phone number is... So Hello, Ben the Cameron. I've been tuned in. I do your videos on, uh, for a while, for some months now, and I like your, I like your material. My name is Eric Dandridge. Uh, I'm 41-year-old. I, I was always into entrepreneur, man. The person, I business that I'm in is getting, is trying to get business loans who are, who does have poor credit and this and the other. But it's hard to find, uh, it's hard to find techniques to do without no money. And I, I just, I just need to, I just want to know some techniques of how to start with no money. Because the advertising costs and this and the other, I just don't have no money. I don't think I'm not going to even lie. But I'm in the business of, uh, uh of getting business that need loans. Uh, that need loans for, uh, for whatever, uh, expansion, materials, this and that other. My number is now, uh, I'm a college student, and uh, you come anytime. I'm based out of Memphis, Tennessee. And uh, so I'm on Central Standard Time, but call me anytime. Like I said, I've been uh, in several uh, uh, entrepreneurship opportunities uh, from door to door sales, direct sales. I do pretty well. But uh, I just like to know. How to start without money, how to get money raised. I just need your expertise and advice on that. How to get money raised. How to start with no money. Because yeah. so, sometimes most capital take capital, make capital. People can't, do not qualify for bank loans and this and other. And it's nature, and you, you advise people to stay away from government sectors such as grants and uh, solicitations of uh, nonprofits and this and other. So i like to know. I'm based out of Memphis, Tennessee. And you can also, uh, uh, you also, you can, uh... Yo, Eric, 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 thanks for the call. I have a video titled How to Start a Business with No Money 2015. I'm going to send you a link and I'm going to also jump a little deeper. If you want to start a business with no money, you have no capital, you have no credit, you don't know anybody, then you have to do what I did, which is start at the bottom and get a job or two jobs or three jobs. At one point when I was living in the boarding house, I had two shit jobs, two. That's what I needed just to make it. So this is what I suggest that you do since you're struggling, you're in college, get one job and write your goals down. Write them down somewhere that this is what I want to do six months into the future. And when you're working your job or your part-time job, any additional money that you have coming in, it goes into a special savings account. That's one way. So you can start with some money. Number two, if you are struggling to make money, then you have not a money problem. You have a talent problem or a skill set problem. There are plenty of jobs and there are plenty of skill sets out there that if you got them, you can make some money and I'm talking about today. So you've got to increase your value to the world, whatever that may be based upon your proclivities, your talents, your hobbies, things like that. Now, the third thing to do if you don't want to get a job and you don't want to save up any money, hustle your face off. Go below the video, get my 14 free courses Focus on Craigslist, buying and flipping, buying and flipping. I did that for a decade. It's a proven and established way to make some money. You're not going to make a lot of money unless you get really good. And to get really good, you're going to have to live it, breathe it, sweat it. So that's what I suggest you do, Eric. Thanks for the call. Hi, I just came across your YouTube channel. Um, I've seen a couple of videos already and I thought I found it very informative. Um, I have a few things that I'm working on now, and I will add some other things you've been saying on your on your YouTube channel, on your videos. Uh, but I do have a few questions. When you get a chance, can you call me back? I see. <sighs> okay, uh, these are the directions to call me. State your name. You can leave your number at the end. You don't even have to put your number. If you don't, if your number's not blocked, I'll know who called and where you called from and ask specific questions. 
if I call back everybody that just call, hey, Glendon, call me back, that's actually kind of in the directions. If you saw him, because, you know, it's in the thumbnail and some people just see a number like, oh, shit, it's a number. Let me call him. But I need more guidance because I could call you and spend 30 minutes finding out what you want to call about unless, you know, you put that in the message. Nanaku Sevenches on Facebook. Nanaku Sevenches. Come by. 513. Identify my target market in a message in the media. 513. Hope to hear from you. Love you. Bye. Let, let's let's break this down. I think I understand you want help finding out your market. This is what you do. You find your market before you try to sell something. I'll use myself as an example. I know there's a bunch of people who want to learn how to make money. It's millions of people in that market. Now, let's niche it down. How many people want to make money from video? How many people want to make money from selling stuff how many people want to make money from online stuff each out of that huge bucket of people who want to make money there's sub buckets of people who want to make money a certain kind of way because they may be positioned for that so i'm gonna send you a link to this video and like i said please ask better questions so i can give better answers my name is mark Grollo and my telephone number is 505 And uh, the question I have for you is for micropreneurs, people that are, you know, starting very small businesses, um, a business plan, is there any way that you could explain how to do a business plan in a simple form? Because um, I'm thinking that uh, that's one of my problems is the lack of direction in, uh, in one area. Anyway, thank you so much, sir. You have a good day. Hey, Mark, let's talk about business plans. This is what I believe you should do. Forget about the business plan right now. Do a test. Find a market that you want to serve, saying that the market's big enough to serve. Then go into the market with a small product or service, just one. And every time you sell that product or service, or if you don't sell that product or service, ask the person what went wrong. Once you get enough information, because when you start to hear the similar things over and over again, then you're going to be better off to actually prepare your business plan. See, a lot of people look at me like I'm crazy because I do a crazy amount of testing, more testing than probably anybody that you know personally. And it comes across as I don't look like what the hell I'm doing. But see, I would rather look foolish to a small group of people than to look foolish to a large group of people. Hence the testing. And a lot of stuff just doesn't work. So take your item or service, test it, get your feedback, adjust, and you might just need to scrap it. It's, you know, if it's not selling, if it's just too hard of a sale, then find another service or product. So then once you've done that and people start to hand you money, then that's when you start formatting, form, uh, formatting a business plan. Because most business plans that are done without that kind of feedback and research are like Moby Dick. Great works of fiction. Lennon, my name is Sean Jones. I'm calling from Houston, Texas. It's more of a career advice question than a business question, but it does tie into business, so here we go. I'll graduate in May with my associate's degree, and I also have a marketing certificate. Right now, as I work, I work as an area supervisor and marketing coordinator for Papa Murphy's Pizza International. And I do that. I work for a franchise owner at the moment, and I also own my own business, Extreme Dips. Extreme Dips is a Plasti Dip service. It's a removable automotive thing. So doing that um, and involved in some other business plans at the moment. So I'm an entrepreneur. That's what I want to do. And I realize I don't need a full college degree for that. I feel like the money I spend on the two years, you know, the 20000 I'm going to be spending for a business bachelor's degree, I could use that towards my business ventures and come out better, not in debt and also 
be ahead. Use that 15 to 20 grand to build my business and invest in other businesses. I have a lot of family members who are pressuring me to continue school. You know, the whole mindset that if you don't continue school, then you'll fail. But, you know, I'm, I'm looking to own my own business. I'm not looking to work for anybody else. So, yeah, there's that. Um, so, basically, somewhat on the mindset of trying to turn my current business, which is somewhat of a hustle because I'm not making a full-time income off of it yet, into a full business and using that money I was going to pay for school into the business, not just one business, but multiple. And, yeah, so if you have any advice for me, I'd appreciate it. Call me back at 3. All righty. There's a lot going on there. Okay, number one, I got a video talking about this. How to drop out of school like a boss. I'll put that in the, the links. And if I don't, somebody remind me. And this is the thing. You, you say 15, 20 grand that you could use to put in your business. Do you have 15, 20 grand cash or you're on student loans? Because if you're on student loans, you really don't have 15 to 20 grand to put into your business. So just I don't know if that's the case, but I'm just putting it out there. You, this, this is common. You keep saying, you said businesses, get your first business to a point where it can support you before you even think of investing in another business. When I started this channel for three years, I talked about nothing else but storage auctions, Craigslist, a little mindset stuff, but for three years, that was it. So whether if it's your dent removal business, focus on that until it gets to the point where it's paying your car note, it's paying your mortgage, it's paying your credit cards, it's paying your bills, and you have money left over. Once you have money left over, then you can talk about being an investor. And even at that point, I would take that money and expand the dent business to three, four, five, six franchises, get people working for you. And this is why. What you already know is greater than what you don't know. It's just going to be easier for you to expand that business since you're already in it. Just my thoughts. And once again, if I don't put the how to drop out of school video like a boss video down there in the comments, somebody remind me. Oh, quitting school. This is tricky because this is just from my perspective. I dropped out my junior year. However, I didn't have student loan debt. I didn't have to pay anybody. I was in the military at the time and they were paying 75% of my tuition and the rest I was paying out of pocket. So when I stopped, everything stopped. If you're in a situation where you have student loans and you drop out of school, you're going to have to start making payments. So you're going to either have less money to start your business because you're going to have to pay that or it's going to hunt you for life. So sit down and crunch numbers. Are you going to be able to drop out of school and create enough additional income to satisfy that student loan debt and fund your business? A lot of questions, a lot of math, a lot of things that you got to think about. Hey, my name is Jeff. Uh, my... Hey, my name is Jeff. Uh, my phone number is... Um, I was just calling because I want to get started on building my own home business. Uh, I was thinking about drop shipping selling on eBay or Amazon. Um, I appreciate if you give me a call for that. Uh. Hey, my. <laughs> All right, let's jump into this one. I am first to admit I know not a lot about drop shipping. I don't recommend eBay. I don't recommend Amazon. So if that's your first choice, Jeff. I can't, I really don't have a lot of advice for you. I'm going to throw this out there. Why don't you go out, find some stuff that you like selling and try to sell it and build some business stuff because you said home business. Then you immediately brought up eBay and you immediately brought up Amazon. Uh, walking dogs is a home business. Uh, home repair is a home business. Helping old people around the house is a home business. Actually, housing Elderly people in your house is a home business. What exactly are you looking for? Freedom, income, what? I don't know. But go here on YouTube. There's tons of people doing eBay only videos. There's tons of people doing Amazon, Amazon FBA videos. I have nothing for you. But just some, just think about that. And thanks for the call. Hi, 
my name is Victoria Dickpen, and I would like my grandson to meet a successful black man and to uh, maybe hear from that black man um, some of the things that they should um, do and some of the things they should not do maybe for their lives uh, to be better. Um, I don't want them to be primarily raised by women, which the men in our family have. Anyway. All right, Miss V. Woo, big question. All right, this is going to get me beat up, but I'm going to say it. Raise your grandsons as competent, healthy, brave souls. Don't tell them they're black. This, this is the thing, and I'm going to jump into it because you asked the question. Right now, there's a lot of stuff going on politically and socially. Black Lives Matter, police brutality, racism, many, many things. Now, I've got a few videos up here that I don't know how old they are. You may not want to let them listen to them because I cuss. But I don't consider myself a minority. Why would I marginalize myself like this? I don't accept some things that people I know have accepted that I call it the black and you're fucked uh, syndrome. I don't accept that. When I fail, I figure I fail because I didn't have enough knowledge. I figured I failed because I didn't prepare. Or I made a mistake. Have I been impacted by racism? Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you a story. I walked into a sales meeting. I was the only black guy in the company. And Ken was telling Jim, like, Jim was an owner this weekend. You know, like the good old days. I walked into that meeting, and then when Ken saw me, it was, ah, Glendon. That's what I dealt with every day. So I got really, really pissed off, and I almost quit. And I was like, okay, you're getting connected like a motherfucker here. You're learning shit you would not learn anywhere else. So you're going to quit because a racist old fart made a comment? How weak are thou? So I developed that attitude. I'm going to fucking win. And I didn't quit that day. I quit six months later and I took a quarter of a million dollars business with me. So raise them that they can succeed. Do not fill their heads with, oh, if you're white, black, white people. No, I've got white customers. I've got black customers. I have Asian customers. I have Jewish customers. I have customers literally around the world. And they know that I'm black. I'm not the most professional person in the world. They know how I get down. So Tell them to be true to themselves. Tell them to be authentic and curious. Have them be very, very curious. Tell them to read a lot of books. If they're really smart and they've kind of got that nerd thing going on, support that. Take them to science fairs. Take them to the museum. And whenever someone, because they will be mocked and they will be ridiculed because we have, uh, it's not just a black thing, but it's almost a society thing where intellectualism is debated and it's mocked and it's shamed when it's the intellectuals who are putting all this stuff together and running the world, which is kind of interesting when I think about that. But that's pretty much all I have because, I mean, this could go on and on and on. But the core issues is do not indoctrinate them that they're screwed because they're black. Don't do that. Right now, if they're really young, they don't even know. They go out and let them learn and they're going to learn some harsh lessons. It's going to happen. And I have no clue to not being raised by men because my story was a little different. My grandmother was kind of like my father because she died when I was 11. So I had the, quote, two-parent household, and my grandmother took the role of teaching me how to read, teaching me a lot of stuff. So I got that two-parent model, and then I grew up in a neighborhood there was a lot of men that were married. There was a lot of examples walking around. I know a lot of kids aren't getting that. Um, so it's just different. I, but I went out and found mentors even at an early age. It's just kind of funny how that worked out. But if anything else comes to me, uh, I'm going to just call you and give you a little chat. Thanks for the question. <laughs> Way deeper than I thought it would be, but that's what I got. Hey, what's up? Just looked at your video. Uh, it was part of a link set. After I looked at a couple uh, other videos, uh, anyway, I saw you had a 404 uh, extension. I'm in the Atlanta area. 
been grinding for about four years, man, with my business. So uh, thanks for the, the advice on, hey, it's going to happen. Because I got a, uh, like you say, business has changed, and I'm about to revolutionize the mobile car wash industry. But anyway, my number is 770. Uh, I'm going to assume that you have a question about the mobile car wash industry. You're part of the service sector. I think that is a growth business because people who care about the appearance of their car, they're going to get it washed. They may, you know, times get tough. They may not get it washed every week. They may go there every twice a week or they may go there once a month, but it's still going to happen. Now, since you already have a business, what I'm going to do is send you a special code to 30 days to 2500. That's going to give you a lot more juice on what you need to do without me calling you back and we going back and forth and asking these questions. So I'm going to do that. So thanks for the question. Appreciate you. Hi, Glennon. My name is Tom Stroh, and uh, I just wanted to let you know that I, I really enjoy watching your videos. Uh, I've learned a lot. And uh, just to tell you a little bit about me, I'm currently pursuing my MBA in Internet Marketing. And uh, I don't know, I, I think I want to get into some kind of uh, MLM or just anything to uh, try to replace that traditional job or whatever. But uh, I understand i got to work a job for a while if I have to, you know, to get where I want to go. But um, I'll be available most of the afternoon, and I can be reached at 7 7-1- Hey, Todd. I think I said his name correctly. Um, I don't know anything about multi-level marketing. I don't do that. And you're, you're getting a degree in internet marketing. Okay. I'm going to go straight to the heart of that. I don't know where you are. If you're paying cash, um, stop. The best way that you're going to learn how to be an internet marketer is to get online and start marketing. I can tell you, I've been doing this since 2009, and every year it changes. And I'm talking significant changes. Things that you could do, you can no longer do. The big slap down by Google, so many things. And the only way that you're going to, and it changes so fast that let's just say the program you're in is the best program in the country with the top notch information, right? The minute you graduate, that shit's going to be obsolete. So go online, find a market, or what I like to call a bucket people that you can serve, jump in and start selling and marketing and listening to the podcast, watching the YouTube videos, because what you want to get into is change so much and it's going to change again in the next 12 months. So that would be my advice to you. Thanks for the call. Jesse, meet under. Calling about Hustler uh, Kung Fu. And yes, I mean, I need, I'll give you my email address because I just saw it. But I have been like self employed. I was like a home elevator dealer. Then I lost my, uh, well, I still got my account with as a dealer. But I lost my account through the VA. So. You know, that business was a good business, and I was always doing really well, you know, selling home elevators. And I had to restart a whole new career now, and I need, you know, any free information and how to make, like, $2,500 in a month because uh, I need to start from ground zero. And I did, like, you know, all your inside information, so, um, I'm, I'm probably going to try to do anything like on uh, Craigslist. I did not know that I could stand in line to buy tickets or something like that, you know, or become a coach. You know, I mean, I'm uh, out. Okay. All right. Mr. Medina. All right. Let's do this. What I'm going to do, because, you know, I'm giving away the 14 courses free. I'll send you a link to that. You have got to figure out what makes your heart beat. 
I'm hearing maybe Craigslist standing in line. All that stuff is I'm broke. I need to make money. I understand it, but it's not sustainable, not sustainable at all. So you've got to have a long heart to heart talk with yourself on what do you want to do for the next five years? Then what do you want to do for the next 10? And I know people are like, no, 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 just let shit happen. You can determine your future by your thoughts. And this minute that you become really clear about what you want to do, the faster stuff's going to start happening. Thanks for the call. Hey, London, this is Take Good to Guzman. Um, I saw your videos on YouTube and I was very impressed by the content. I'm recently, I've had two years of experience online and most of it was actually failures. And I actually am implementing something on my blog, which is to give um, a good detailed guide on the statistics of successes and failures on the internet with starting up businesses. So um, I just want to know if this is an interesting idea, um, if you can give me a call back, uh, 916. Hey, Kate. Thanks for the call. Thanks for the love. All right. We've all experienced failure online, and more than likely you're going to experience some more, and that's not a bad thing. It's actually good. The more failure that you experience, the more knowledge points data points that you can connect. I got a better question for you. Instead of this statistical website about business failures, online business failures, is this something you can write about every day? Is this something that you can tweet about? Is this something that you want to do on Instagram? Is this something you want to network with other bloggers? Are you really passionate about statistics? Are you really intrigued and curious about statistics? Because if you're not, you're going to get tired of this shit real soon. So my advice to you would be take what you already know from a technical standpoint and see what you can apply it to that you really like. Give you an example of some stuff I'm doing. I've got an Instagram account that I'm putting some weird shit up because I like weird shit. And I've got some new YouTube channels that I put up. They're not for business. They're for me. They may turn into business. They may not. But I like what I'm talking about because you don't have to love it but you need to like it because if you don't like it, you're going to get tired of it. And the first time you hit that hurdle, you might have enough energy to get past it. But if you just keep getting hit, get hit and you're like, I don't even like this shit, you're going to be out. So that would be my advice to you. All right. This wraps up this edition of the show because uh, some really interesting stuff. If you have a business question, do this. Call 404-558-8111. One, state your name. You don't have to leave the phone number until the end. And ask specific questions. Uh, more than likely, I'm just going to mock you and throw, print up your picture and throw darts at it if you just say, hey, Glendon, call me back. That's a huge rabbit hole. Really, it, I want you to be really clear about what you're doing. If you have a hard time figuring out what kind of question to ask me, that's a good starting point to how bad off you are because if you can't articulate in a few questions like what you're doing you haven't given it enough thought that you should even be doing it just saying and for those of you who made it to the end i got a special deal for you yes it's another phone number it'll be up here on the screen somewhere call that number and say i want the hustlers kung fu special it's full membership, and I'm making you a kill, killer deal. Killer. Killer for what you get. And you'll have 24 hours to act on it. So call that number and say, I want the Hustlers Kung Fu full membership special. And you will be in. Don't put it in the comments. Just leave it right here. Thanks.